So good morning, all of you. My name is Shyoti Banerjee, and I'm a product manager in the AOS wireless LAN space. Ash already set the stage talking to you about uh, look, our, our focus on IoT as a platform, because all of our customers are focused very much on the um, digital transformation journey that they have embarked upon. So the AP as an IoT platform is something we've been looking at. We have been doing very prescriptive and deliberative moves in integrating a lot of our partners. Today, uh, I'll talk, you know, we have a very short amount of time, so we'll talk a little bit about what we have been doing to enable Aruba Wireless LAN with the IoT solutions that are really going to drive the use cases that our customers really care about. My colleague, Yona Ostebo, will show you some of these demos that will make it real as to what we have been working on and how they are truly going to be delivering those valuable use cases. So I think it's long past the time that we have to really motivate what IoT does uh, for uh, everybody in the enterprise. Digital transformation is real and our customers are absolutely embracing it. It has the potential to realize tremendous operational and business efficiencies while driving those user experiences for an elevated customer engagement. No question then that our customers are experimenting with ever increasing use cases and we are learning from them. We have at Aruba have always been informed by our customers for their, their truly valuable business outcomes. And those are the applications that we try and integrate within our solutions and try to optimize to deliver value. I think we don't need to belabor the point that the IoT space is extremely fragmented, lots of different protocols and lots of different sensors out there, different platforms and architectures. And how do we get a handle on that within the enterprise without requiring extra cabling, without requiring additional switchboards out there? Our customers tell us that their main pain points in driving a successful IoT outcome is the cost of an overlay network. The cost of an overlay network to manage those endpoints and the added complexity of parallel radio access networks. So anything we can do in that space to simplify, drive the costs down, directly results in a bottom line savings for them. So looking at this, the solution that Aruba has been really focused on is in an integrated experience for our customers that will address the pain points that they have been experiencing with the cost and the additional radio access networks. You've heard about how our portfolio has really been we have really looked at fleshing out our port indoor access point portfolio in the Wi-Fi 6 space. We've always had an integrated BLE uh, radio in our access points. What we have added in the uh, 500 series or the Wi-Fi 6 access points is in addition the 802.15.4 radio on which the software stacks, you can have a ZigBee protocol implemented. So. The Arupa 500 series has the provision for the BLE in addition to the uh, ZigBee. Additionally, all of our access points have the USB protocol over which we can easily integrate a lot of those proprietary uh, protocols which the sensor manufacturers have. This USB can have either a serial uh, interface for those protocols or have Ethernet over USB. With this, we are in a position to handle enterprise use cases based on BLE, ZigBee, and uh, the myriad of the uh, proprietary protocols that are out there today. In future, you can also envisage that you will have IoT endpoints, which are uh, Wi-Fi 6 based, simply because of the characteristics of 802.11ax that will lend itself very nicely to those endpoints. Having a aggressive power savings mode with the target wait time, the OFDMA um, and protocol, which essentially gives you the ability to have up to 37 simultaneous uh, transmissions. All of those make Wi-Fi 6 IoT endpoints very attractive. But today, the vast majority of enterprise use cases are centered on uh, BLE, ZigBee, and many other protocols. So what we have done 
in the Wi-Fi 6 space is that we have defined a very clear, a very extensible, flexible, and configurable uh, IoT transport protocol that the users can configure for the endpoints that they want to support within their environment, as well as a destination management server where all those, the data from the endpoints will be sent to for gleaning the insights and the business outcomes. We have also defined essentially a generic streaming protocol that our customers can parse to get the data that they are interested in. So with these, this platform is ready and available to be deployed. The same uh, access network that is on your ceilings uh, today is in a position to address those IoT endpoints without requiring any add-on module, any bulky um, cabling that you need to do once you have already installed it. The, we all understand that the IoT space is replete with partnerships. No one vendor can do it all. So we have been very deliberative in the partners that we are onboarding because this requires us to do a true integration, which means that we don't just say that the partner has uh, BLE endpoints, so it should work with our BLE. We engage very deliberatively with them to understand that we have the ability to parse their, their BLE streams. We are the type, there are several BLE types that we can recognize today, the iBeacon being one of them, Eddystone, and uh, we have defined our own format as well to which some of the sensor vendors are writing their solutions. The, our integration is fully backed by the robustness of test suites and validation that you have every right to expect from an, IO, in, an enterprise IoT solution. The same rigor that we apply in the uh, testing and integration for our access products goes into our integration efforts with the IoT endpoints. So, while it is easy to deploy a, an IoT uh, because you have sensors instrumenting your area, you do have the scale and robustness requires real engineering uh, effort. And that's what we have been investing in. That's the result why we can onboard about, uh, you know, we are an onboarding several partners every quarter and we are not unleashing a torrent of these. We are trying to understand the partnerships that matter in the specific verticals that we are targeting, be it retail, be it industrial, or the, uh, within the enterprise. So we have detailed uh, QA suites, we have detailed product briefs, and uh, IoT uh, API documentation that support these integrations. But that's for the Wi-Fi 6. A, a lot of our installed base today has the AC uh, access points, the 300 series access points. We, if these customers want to implement the IoT solutions, we don't recommend a forklift upgrade. What we have developed, <coughs> excuse me, is a dongle that will work, that will enable the radio expansion port for the Zigbee based, the 802.15.4 um, protocol. So they have the integrated BLE within the access point, but they also have this ability to introduce ZigBee-based use cases with this dongle. Again, the USB port, and it's, it's easily implemented. So we're trying to simplify our users' desires to implement these valuable uh, use cases, not just in our leading product lines, but as in our installed base as well. So what you get, so this is just a small view of some of the partnerships we have uh, put in place. The, we obviously have a lot of the, the Meridian type of location uh, based services enabled through beacons. We have the asset tags. We have integrated with ZF OpenMatic, several door lock vendors, the, uh, the electronic shelf labels and many other providers for home automation, the lighting switches, the, um, the other, the thermostat controls, and so forth. What, so on the, what, on the one hand, you get all of these endpoints that our customers are deploying, are instrumenting their, um, their environments with, and on the right is essentially the, their management servers that could reside either in a public cloud or in a private cloud.
they are in full control of deciding where the data goes to and where they will actually look at for all the insights, for managing the endpoints, and so forth. What you have in the center as the same access wireless LAN network, which is going to give you the access to the data. You configure where the data goes, and you go to the management server and see the telemetry stream that comes to you with all the valuable IoT uh, information, IoT data that you're going to glean the information from. So it's you're in full control, this is, and the same secure environment will send the IoT uh, stream to you. The, uh, Yona will talk, uh, just demonstrate to you some of the use cases, and we have time just to show you a couple of these. One of them will be with the energy harvesting solutions from an ocean for, with light switches, and with some of the electronic shelf labels, the different use cases that uh, have come about. And um, let me just hand it over to Yona here. All right. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of demos I wanted to showcase. Uh, one of them is with the Enotion switches. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Enotion switches. Uh, one of the things they've done that's pretty cool is there are no battery, nothing. They're using the mechanical force when you push to charge a small capacitor and from there sending a small beacon out in the air and we are detecting that. So uh, in this use case, we are thinking of what can we do for in a K-12 uh, uh, scenario. Think about you being a teacher at uh, fifth grade. By the way, I would never do that job. But it's, uh, thank God we have someone that wants to do that job. Um, but you, and one of the challenges is to put the wireless into exam mode and only affect one of the classes. So with a switch like this, this uh, teacher can push the button and change the user role uh, uh, for the users on fifth grade only, as an example. So if I'm pushing, uh, hopefully it's, um, come on. It should work. <laughs> of course, now it's the demo ghost. Um, this should, and it might be that our little backend server is stopped here now. Uh, so we've built a little uh, backend uh, Python script, uh, script that's running. So this is sending out a uh, uh, small beacon. We are listening, the API is listening for that. It's sending a notification to our uh, backend Python script, receiving that, sending an a API to the controller turning off the light as a visual indication to the teacher, but it also at the same time is changing the user role to block the internet for students. But they will still have access to uh, all the school uh, applications. And then of course when the uh, teacher pushes down, it should get the internet uh, back on again. Now something has stopped here in between when we put it up and now, so it didn't work. But that's a, that's a part of the risk when you're doing demos like this. The other thing we have is of course, uh, we talked about um, uh, uh, shortly talked about uh, integration we're doing with like uh, shelf labels. So I have a shelf label uh, here from SES in Magotag. We have several vendors that we integrated with and one of the challenges with these kind of vendors is um, uh, some of them are using 2.4 gig and some of them are using proprietary 900 megahertz. Actually most of them are uh, have legacy things using proprietary 2.4 gig and they're moving on to pr uh, proprietary uh, 900 megahertz. The challenge with 2.4 is, of course, noise. And we could maybe integrate it into our AP, but the challenge is uh, with each vendor having proprietary radio technology, it would be, be really hard to manage that. The other thing, we could have it in, built into an AP or a, a module plug into an AP, but then it will only be on older APs. So to be able to be uh, forward thinking, it's much more flexible for us to use the USB port. So what we have been, uh, so this device here, what this is doing is using a standard uh, USB to serial chip in it. And behind that, they're having a little radio device, and we are managing that in the access point. That means also the access point, if this is 2.4, the access point can coordinate when the radio should be, uh, when 2.4 Wi Fi radio should stop transmitting and when it should uh, continue transmitting to prevent brownouts on the uh, traffic, the ACK message we're getting from these devices. On 900 megahertz, of course, uh, we have more flexibility. So. Uh, so one, the one solution I have here is using SMS Mago tag, and I just we have a little uh, app that we used for we use that atmosphere. So I'm just gonna um, go ahead and scan this. Um, so I just had to find something with the barcode. It takes about five seconds, and it will uh, start flashing. At least one day will work. Cool. 
Uh, one of the things that, in case we were thinking about this, is think about you working at uh, the hardware store. Most of them have, they might have 150 feet of small bags with screws. If you are restocking, so one of the things is uh, staff often makes mistakes. They might hang the screws in the wrong place, all the small bags. So by doing this, it's one way of, uh, they're scanning the box they're going to hang with screws, and then flash where they uh, uh, place them, so it's less uh, failure on where things are getting placed. The other thing is, we built an app where we integrated with uh, the Meridian app as an end user. So picture yourself going to the hardware store looking for a, a screw of uh, size 8 and a given length and, uh, and so on, a given head on it. Then you're walking, uh, using the Meridian app to find our uh, wayfinding, getting there, it will show you. And when you're within 15 feet, it starts flashing to indicate this is the one you're looking for. Just another way of enhancing the, uh, uh, the user experience. And we have added that so it works with all of our IP and we have full backward compatibility. So just another uh, powerful thing. Another thing that we have, we have some partners that have taken the same approach, but instead of using the serial communication, uh, we added support for it being basically uh, Ethernet over USB. So then when you have the USB device, there's an Ethernet uh, over USB chip. Behind that, they have a microcompute device, so edge compute. The, we have partners that have been using uh, that, and they have sensors integrated into the, the devices. We have partners that are using this, like uh, SolarM, where they're using this for uh, their um, uh, electronic shelf labels. So it's just an example of how this can be flexible and make uh, a lot of flexibility on what the partners can add in into these devices. Question. Um, today, um, let's say 8.5, Hmm? Support for that is is in OS8 today. It is Absolutely. yes. For, uh, for so the this is actually with SES and Magatech, we have several major customers in Europe using it in production, both on campus space and instant. Excellent.